Hi guys, on this very first episode of Entertaining Made Easy, I'm gonna teach you how easy it is to put together a vegetarian menu from start to finish that's gonna be so flavorful, so delicious, so rich and hearty that you will not miss the meat. The best thing about this dinner menu is that all of it can be made ahead, all of it except for the salad that is, obviously, and that makes for stress-free entertaining, which is what I'm all about. For the main course, we're gonna be making our spinach and feta lasagna rolls, and I'm gonna serve them with a delicious peppery arugula salad with some sliced sweet strawberries. It's gonna be the perfect combination, and since we're going with a nice, hearty main course, like something like spinach and feta lasagna, we're gonna kick things off with a nice light appetizer. I'm gonna teach you how to make my vegetarian dolmades, which are lemony grape leaves that are gonna be filled with a rice and herb filling. Then they're gonna be served with my creamy tzatziki. It's just gonna be absolutely delicious. And for dessert, I'm sticking to the classic gadaifi. Gadaifi is just shredded phyllo rolls that are soaked in an aromatic honey syrup, and I like to serve them with ice cream. If this menu sounds good to you and you wanna see more. Once this episode is over, click the link right underneath this video, head on over to Patreon and become a member of my brand new channel, Demetra's Dishes Entertaining Made Easy, where I'll share at least two menus just like this one for stress-free entertaining. They're going to be menus filled with tips and tricks that are going to make life so easy. The link with all of the information is in the description box down below, right below this video. Let's get started with my favorite part of any meal, dessert. We're going to begin making the kadaifi rolls. So in my pot, I have sugar. I'm going to drop in a cinnamon stick. I'm going to add some water. Just going to give it a little mix. Then we're going to need the peel and the juice of the lemon. So with my peeler over here, I'm just going to go ahead and peel some strips of this lemon and pop them into my syrup. And always make sure you remove the peel before you juice it, otherwise it's gonna be impossible to get that peel off. Then we're just gonna juice this lemon. You can use an orange if you don't have lemon or if you prefer the taste of orange, that'll do too. Or you could leave the citrus out all together and use a tablespoon of rose water. Add the lemon juice to the syrup. We're gonna cook this over medium high heat until it comes to a boil and all of the sugar is dissolved. Then we're gonna add a cup of honey to it, off the heat. And since honey gets stuck to the measuring cup, I like to just use the measuring cup to stir it all together and get any honey that's stuck on the measuring cup out. Now I'm just gonna set this aside because I need this to cool completely before we pour it onto our pastry. Next, I'm just gonna melt some unsalted butter over medium heat in a small saucepan. And while that's happening, let me tell you about the nut filling that we're gonna use. I have some ground walnuts, some ground toasted almonds, and some pistachios. Now you can use any of your favorite nut combinations. You could do all pistachio or all almond, all walnut. It's completely up to you. It depends on what you like. I'm gonna save these pistachios as a topping because this is all I have on hand. And I'm just gonna use the almond and the walnut as the filling. I have a little bit of sugar. All of the flavor comes from the aromatics. I'm using a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and half a teaspoon of ground cloves. These are the flavors of most Greek syrupy desserts like baklava. And I'm just gonna mix this all together until it's incorporated and combined well. Kadaifi dough is generally sold in the freezer section of the supermarket or the specialty food store. You can always find it in Middle Eastern and Mediterranean grocery stores in the freezer. There are just a few things that you need to do so that way everything goes smoothly. First of all, once you bring it home, if you know you're gonna work with it, put it in your refrigerator overnight so that way it could thaw nicely. Then in the morning when you get up, take it out and leave it on your counter in its packaging. Do not take it out of the box or out of the plastic wrap, otherwise it will dry up and it'll crumble and break into pieces and you will not be able to roll it or work with it. Very simple, once it's at room temperature, we're gonna take it out of the packaging and start to make our kadaifi rolls. We're just gonna take it out of the packaging and you also want to have a towel that's slightly damp, and you'll see why in a second. And we're just going to very carefully separate the strands without breaking them too much. You want them to stay nice and long, so that way they're easy to work with when we're going to be forming our rolls. And once you separate it like I did, go ahead and just divide it into four portions. 
If you have to break it just a little bit to divide it, that's fine. Try to do it as, break it as little as possible. So I'm gonna keep one portion out, that's the one that we're gonna work with first, and I'm gonna cover the other three with this damp kitchen towel so that way they don't dry up and start to break when we're ready to use them. Now each portion we're gonna separate into three portions because this recipe makes 12 to 13 big kadaifi rolls. If you wanna make them smaller, then you would go ahead and separate them into more portions so that we could roll them smaller. So here we have our three portions. Now I'm using a round baking pan, but this all fits in a nine by 13 inch baking pan if that's what you have. Now we're gonna take this melted butter and brush the tops generously. And then we're gonna take a tablespoonful of this aromatic nut filling and put it towards the bottom. And then we're just gonna fold the sides over and roll up. There we have one. Just keep it all together by tucking everything in and rolling. And if any nut filling falls, just go ahead, pick it up with any broken pieces. Just go ahead and wrap them in. And then you're gonna take each piece and put it in your baking pan and then brush them all around generously with this melted butter. It's gonna add so much flavor. And we're gonna move on with the next batch, separate it into three portions, and we're gonna keep doing this until we have 12 pieces of kadaifi rolled up and in the pan. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and brush the remaining butter over all of the tops of the kadaifi rolls. If you've noticed, I switched pans. That pan was way too big. This is a 10 inch round. So if you use a 10 inch round for this or a nine by 13 inch rectangular baking tray, either of the two would do, but anything bigger would leave too much room and they might open up during baking. Go ahead and pour the remaining butter on top and all of these leftover little pieces and the nut mixture, I like to just put in between the nooks and the crannies. I don't like to waste anything. But if you don't wanna do this, you can go ahead and put this remaining nut mixture in a little airtight container and store it in your freezer for the next time you make this or you can mix it in your baklava filling. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is gonna go in the center rack and it's gonna bake for about 45 minutes to an hour or until it's nice and golden on top. Once the kadaifi comes out of the oven, go ahead and pour all of the syrup that's cooled down over it. Set it aside at room temperature for at least one to two hours because it is gonna take its time, but it will absorb all of that syrup. In the beginning, it might look like a lot, but trust me, it needs every single drop of that syrup so it can be nice and flavorful. The top is gonna to be crisp, and the middle is just gonna be soft and delicious. Once it's done absorbing the syrup and it's cooled down to room temperature, take it and store it in your refrigerator. Now you can make this two days before the party. The day on the day of the party, take it out of the refrigerator and transfer it onto a serving dish. You can top it with some crushed pistachios and serve it when it's time with a delicious side of vanilla ice cream. Rose ice cream goes well too and I will post the link with the recipe underneath this video if you wanted to make that instead. Now we're gonna move on to making the appetizer, which is these delicious stuffed grape leaves, also known as dolmadakia in Greek. I love them because they can be part of a meze platter, which could include cheese and dips and bread and pita chips and things like that. But today we're gonna to keep it simple because our main course is so rich and we're gonna make them vegetarian. They're so good. I love them also because you can make these at least three days before the party and they'll still taste delicious. As a matter of fact, I think that if you make these ahead of time and you let them sit in the fridge, they sort of marinate in all those delicious flavors and they taste even better the day that you're gonna go and serve them. We're gonna start off with going over the ingredients. So in a strainer over here, I have eight ounces of grape leaves that I buy store-bought that are in a jar full of brine. What I do is I rinse them really well with some cold water and then I keep them in a colander so that way they can strain. I have some dried dill, but you use fresh dill if you want some fresh mint, fresh parsley that we're gonna chop up, the juice of lemons, we need about a half a cup, fresh juice always, some rice, 
a little bit of water. This is a cup of water and a half a cup of long grain rice. Salt, pepper, olive oil. And then the last two ingredients is an onion that I finely chopped that's been cooking in some olive oil. You want to cook this until it's really nice and soft. Don't let it get too golden or brown or anything like that. You just want it to be soft. And that takes about 10 minutes over medium heat. While the onion is cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my herbs. Once the onions are soft, go ahead and add the rice with a half teaspoon of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, give it a mix, and then add a cup of water. Bring this mixture to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, I forgot to mention that you should also add half of the lemon juice to the rice mixture. And we're gonna let this simmer for about eight minutes or until all of the liquid is absorbed. Turn the heat off, and then at this point, go ahead and add all of your, dry, your chopped up herbs, along with a teaspoon, put a little bit more of dill. Take it off of the heat and mix it all together and just set it aside to cool. As soon as the herbs hit that hot rice, it just smells so incredible. So while the rice is cooling down, just squeeze the leaves so that way you can get rid of all of that excess moisture. Be careful not to rip them though. And then the grape leaves have two sides. They have a dull side that has the vein showing with the stem and the shiny side. So we're going to put them shiny side down, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and cut off this little stem because it stays tough even after you cook it and you just don't want anything tough in your grape leaves. We're gonna remove all of the stems and then we're gonna fill them. The fastest way to make these dolmades is to take the leaves and to spread them out, again, shiny side down onto your cutting board. Get as many on there as you can. Now, if you find any leaves that are torn, put those aside and you're gonna save those to line the bottom of the pan. You'll know what I'm talking about in a little while. Or you can take them and double them up to make, you can use two to make one grape leaf. But I really like to use them for the bottom of the pan. So my little assembly line is ready. Now I'm gonna take the filling and I'm gonna place just a tablespoonful right in the center of each leaf. Don't put any more because these are going to expand while cooking and you don't want them to tear the leaf or to burst out from the side. So you're gonna to wanna to fold the sides over to cover the filling, and then the bottom should be folded up, and you wanna fold them pretty tight so you have a nice little parcel, just like that. Show you another one. You could fold up also, and then do the sides and then fold it up again, tucking in as you go, and line them seam side down. Okay, so this one tore, and it's a perfect example of what can possibly happen to you. I don't want you to panic if the leaf happens to tear. Just go ahead and double it up like this, and you'll be totally fine. And roll it up in the same way. Once the dolmadas are rolled, you're gonna take the leftover leaves that you have, the broken pieces, or just the ones that are left over because this makes about 25 to 30. It just depends how big the leaves are and how much you fill them. So I got about 25 dolmadas. So here we go, we're gonna make a bed so that way it protects them from touching the bottom of the pan. And then we're just gonna nestle them in, seam side down. Now we're just gonna pour the remaining lemon juice on top. Season very lightly with a little bit of salt, some freshly ground black pepper. And then I'm gonna invert two plates on top. This is gonna keep everything in place and keep them from opening up. And I'm gonna pour some water in so that we can cover the dolmadas. I'm gonna bring this to a boil over high heat then I'm gonna cover it and reduce it to a simmer and let them simmer for 35 to 40 minutes or until the, the rice is nice and tender. After about 35 to 40 minutes, go ahead and remove the lid. Take, take, carefully take out the inverted plates and then also remove these top leaves. 
When you insert a fork, it should go in easily. That's how you know it's ready. You could also take one out and taste it. At this point, they're still steaming hot. I'm just gonna drizzle them with a little bit of extra virgin cold pressed Greek olive oil. And I'm gonna leave them in my pan until they cool completely. Then I can take them out and store them in the refrigerator until I'm ready to serve them. To make the tzatziki, it doesn't get simpler than this. All you need is an English cucumber, two garlic cloves, some Greek yogurt, sour cream, salt, freshly ground black pepper, and some dill. Just cut the ends off of the English cucumber. Go ahead and grate it using a box grater. Take all of the grated cucumber and put it in a colander so that way it can drain. And it's also a good idea to sprinkle about a half a teaspoon of salt over the cucumber. Mix it all up. This is gonna help draw out all of the water. Combine the yogurt and the sour cream. Grate the garlic cloves into the yogurt mixture. Season lightly with a little bit of salt, some freshly ground black pepper, and a little bit of dill. You can use fresh dill or dry dill, or you can even do some chopped fresh mint if you have some in your backyard, if you have some in your fridge. Mix this all up. You will see that the cucumber releases a lot of liquid and you don't want that in your sauce. It'll just water it down. Go ahead and add the cucumber to the yogurt dip. Mix it well. Now you can leave the dill and the mint out and just leave the sauce without the herbs and just garnish it on top once you're done. But I feel like the dill and the cucumber and the yogurt goes very well together. I love the combination. I equally love mint in here, so you can put a little bit of mint in here as well. Go ahead and give it a taste and adjust the seasoning if it's needed. That tastes perfect to me. I'm just gonna set this in my fridge until we're ready to serve it. If you wanna make the tzatziki one or two days ahead of time, when you put it in the bowl, go ahead and cover it with some napkins or paper towels. Make sure they're heavy duty so they don't melt into your dip so that way it can absorb the excess water that the um, cucumbers are gonna continue to release. Cover it with plastic wrap and store it in your refrigerator until you're ready to serve it at your party. Once the dolmadas cool, let them cool in the pan and they're gonna absorb any liquid that's left over. You can go ahead and transfer them into an airtight container and keep them in your refrigerator at least two days before the party. If there's any sauce left on the bottom of the pan, go ahead and pour that over the top as well. On the day of the party, go ahead and take a serving dish out, put a bowl of tzatziki on the side, arrange the dolmadas all around it with some lemon slices and set it on the table for your guests to enjoy. I, once they bite into these, they're gonna, you're gonna find that they're delicious and bright and refreshing. You can serve these at room temperature or straight out of the refrigerator, nice and cold. It's completely up to you. And now it's time to move on to the main course. For the main course, I've decided to make my spinach and feta filled lasagna rolls. Now, spanakopita is one of my favorite flavor combinations, and it's most people's too because it is one of the most popular recipes on this channel and on my website. So I decided to take the flavors of the spanakopita and turn them into lasagna rolls. I love this recipe because you can make it weeks ahead and keep it in the freezer. You can assemble it the day before and keep it in your refrigerator and then pop it out and bake it in the oven right before your guests arrive. It's perfect, it's hearty, and it is delicious. Let's start. So I'm gonna begin making the spinach filling by grating two garlic cloves over a pan. The heat is off underneath it right now. I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of olive oil. And because the garlic is grated, it's gonna heat through really quickly, so we're not gonna turn the heat on yet. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up all of the spinach. This looks like a lot of spinach, but trust me, when this hits the heat in the frying pan, it's gonna cook down to almost nothing. So just roughly chop it. I'm gonna turn the heat on over medium high just so that way the garlic can warm through. The second you smell it, you know it's ready. It takes just a few seconds for the garlic to warm through. Then go ahead and add the spinach in two or three batches. As soon as the first batch wilts down, go ahead and add, add the next one. And you're just gonna cook the spinach a few minutes just until it's all wilted. 
Now that's how you know it's ready. Now you're just gonna transfer it into a large mixing bowl. Season it lightly with a little bit of salt, freshly ground black pepper. And then I'm gonna add the ricotta cheese. I like to use full fat ricotta cheese. It's the best and only kind of cheese that you should be using. So add that, crumble in the feta. This is gonna cool the spinach down quickly. Go ahead and add some crushed red pepper flakes for heat if you'd like. A teaspoon of dried dill and mix this all together. And before you add the eggs in, go ahead and give it a taste to see if it needs more salt and pepper. It needs a little pinch more salt. And you know what, I'm also gonna add some black pepper. I have two eggs here that I'm gonna lightly beat. Add it to the mixture and combine everything. And just like that, the filling is ready. Next, I wanna talk about the sauce. Now you can use pre-made pasta sauce or marinara sauce, or you can make your own. I like to doctor up some pre-made, especially when I'm making everything from scratch and I wanna save some time. If you wanna make your own, it's very simple to make. I'm gonna share the recipe with the PDF that comes with this whole menu, but for now, I'm gonna show you how I use store-bought pasta sauce to make life easier. I like to put the whole jar of pasta sauce in a blender and I'm gonna mix it all up because in our house, everyone likes very smooth sauce. If you like it chunky, then you don't have to do anything to it. So go ahead and pour, divide the sauce into the two trays. This is gonna make enough lasagna rolls that are gonna fit in a nine by 14 inch baking tray along with an eight inch square baking tray. If you have one that'll fit all of the lasagna rolls, then you could just do this all in one tray but I'm gonna use two. All I'm gonna do is put about a tablespoon of olive oil in each pan, and I'm gonna season with some salt, some crushed red pepper flakes, you can leave them out if you don't like the heat, and a little bit of dried oregano. Just mix it all up with a spoon, and then you can give it a taste and see if it needs a little more salt and pepper, you could go ahead and add it. And that's it, you've made store-bought sauce much more flavorful. Now we're gonna move on to making the bechamel sauce. So to a little saucepan here that I have heating over medium heat, I'm gonna add some all-purpose flour, equal amounts, and some olive oil. It's a quarter cup of all-purpose flour with a quarter cup of olive oil. Instead of olive oil, you can feel free to use butter, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix it up and cook it over medium heat until the flour is toasted. Next, you're gonna go ahead and add some milk. Now, it's a good idea to warm the milk up or at least leave it at room temperature, and then the sauce will come together even quicker. Whisk it well so that way there won't be any lumps, and then go ahead and season it with a little bit of salt, a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper, and about an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. This is gonna thicken quickly. Once it thickens, we're gonna take it off the heat. Now I have one egg yolk and one whole egg. I'm just gonna whisk it up to break it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna temper it with some of this creamy, warm mixture. So that way when the egg hits the cream, it's not gonna curdle or turn into scrambled eggs. I'm gonna add my egg mixture to the sauce along with some grated Parmesan cheese. Mix it all together and the bechamel sauce is done. I have a pound of lasagna noodles that I've boiled according to package directions. I'm gonna take them and just make a little assembly line now. So once you boil them, make sure I boiled mine for about 10 to 12 minutes in salty water. Then once they're done, I like to run them I like to put them in a colander first and then run lots and lots of cold water over them so that way they stop cooking. So I'm gonna make a little assembly line now so that way this part moves quickly. I have my lasagna noodles on the board. I also have the spinach and feta filling, some shredded mozzarella cheese, and my baking tray. Take a quarter cup of the spinach and feta filling and put it on the bottom of the roll. Sprinkle with a little bit, about a tablespoon of shredded mozzarella cheese, and then roll up. And while you're rolling, if any of the filling comes out, don't worry about it. You're just gonna scoop it up and use it in another roll. It's no big deal. And keep going until you have about 15 to 16 rolls done, or until your filling runs out. Now take your lasagna rolls and nestle them into the baking tray right on top of the tomato sauce. I found that you can fit 10 in one baking tray. Once all of the lasagna rolls are in the pan, seam side down, you're gonna go ahead and pour the bechamel sauce on top of them. 
Now, if your bechamel sauce is sitting and gets a little bit too thick, you could go ahead and thin it out with a little bit of more milk, warm milk, or some warm water. And then last, we're gonna make this even more cheesy with some more shredded mozzarella on top. Now you can do this whole procedure up to three weeks ahead of time. Keep it in your freezer. Once it sets, instead of putting foil on the tray, wrap it tightly with plastic wrap, and then when you're ready to bake it, the night before, thaw it out in your refrigerator overnight. Take it out, cover it with foil, and then bake it the day that you're serving it for 20 minutes more than what the recipe calls for, so it's gonna take about an hour or maybe more, but the exact, the exact time will be in the PDF that comes with this recipe. If you're making this one day ahead of time, then cover it with foil and keep it stored in your refrigerator. The day that you're going to serve this, make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure that the trays are covered in foil. They're gonna bake for 45 minutes covered. Then take the foil off and then turn your broiler setting on to high and let, the, let it cook under the broiler for about four to five minutes or until the cheese becomes bubbly and nice and golden. Take it out of the oven and finally slice some scallions and garnish the tops of the lasagna and you are going to have the most delicious vegetarian entree that everyone will love. What I love about these lasagna rolls is that they can go straight from oven to table. You don't have to worry about cutting it into portions because they're already pre-portioned in the little rolls so your guests can take as many as they like. Set it, in, set it in the center of the table, put the salad on the side, sit down with your guests and enjoy this delicious meal. The final part of this menu is the salad and you're gonna wanna assemble this right before you serve it, otherwise the salad will be soggy. It pairs so well with the rich and hearty lasagna rolls. Let's begin making this. In this large mixing bowl here, I have equal amounts of arugula leaves. These are baby arugula leaves that I've washed and dried and I also have some romaine and spinach leaves in here. I love the combination of the two. I'm gonna go ahead and slice the strawberries. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the vinaigrette with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Really good quality cold pressed Greek extra virgin olive oil. Some Greek honey for sweetness. A little bit of salt, some dried oregano, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper and a little bit of lemon zest for that nice bright flavor in the background. A quarter of this small lemon will be fine. When you're zesting lemon, make sure that you stop once you get to the white part of the lemon. I'm gonna switch over to my whisk and whisk this all up. Now to the mixing bowl, I'm gonna add the sliced strawberries. It's already looking so pretty. I'm gonna crumble in this feta cheese. It's gonna add creaminess and that delicious feta cheese flavor. And then we have a baby basil leaf plant in the backyard. You can go ahead and just take a few regular basil leaves and just slice them up, maybe three or four will do. I've toasted some walnuts in the oven at 350 degrees for five minutes. It deepens their flavor and it just makes them much more better tasting. I'm gonna roughly chop them. You can use pecans if you like, pine nuts. And I'm gonna add these to the salad for some nice crunch. Give the dressing another little whisk just to incorporate everything. Pour it all over the top. Now you can assemble the salad an hour or two before the, your guests arrive and then just keep the dressing in, the, in a separate bowl. Whisk the dressing all together right before you serve it. Mix the salad up. And then if you're serving it in the same serving bowl, clean the serving bowl up from the sides or transfer it to a nice salad bowl. Set it on the table right next to your spinach and cheese lasagna rolls. I hope you enjoy each and every one of these recipes and you enjoy your time with your guests now that I've showed you how simple it is to pull this menu all together. If you like this menu and you want to see more, my next menu on Patreon will be featuring lamb chops. So if you like the sound of that, head on over to patreon.com. The link is in the description box down below and become a member of our delicious community where I'll answer all of your comments, all of your questions. Click the link to learn more. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'll see you next time. Yes, us.